get ready. Get set. And hold on. Good and tight. Because it's going to be one heck of a ride. Good morning. Welcome to today, Wednesday, August 27th, 2014. And this, what you're listening to here, is the Mouth of a Two-Shock Show. I'll say that again slow. Mouth of Matushak, because I am your host, Paul Gregory Matushak, and you're stuck listening to my mouth, or you could change the channel, or uh, stop the podcast, but you don't want to do that, you're interested in what I have to say, and I'm interested in what you have to say, so go ahead, if you're listening to the podcast, Go ahead and uh, leave stuff down in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you either on the air or uh, directly through the comment feed. If you're listening to this live, or you want to call in live, you're listening to the podcast, but you want to call in and uh, have your voice heard through this broadcast, go ahead and call 520-226. Eight, five, six, seven, and uh, we're right here with you from eight to nine a.m. Monday through Friday, and that's eight to nine Central Time. Because I'm down here in this little insignificant speck of dirt, this place that's so small it's hard to actually hard to actually believe that they consider it a state. Of course, I'm talking about Texas. Texas! Yeah. Slowly but surely, folks, I'm becoming a true Texan here. I emigrated here. I bounced around the world for about 24 years as a a soldier in the United States Army. Settling down originally in Arizona. Now, we'll be talking more about Arizona later. But, uh, I emigrated to Texas, I plan to be here for a few years, who knows how long it's going to end up being, but uh, the way it's going so far, folks, I'm kind of liking it here. There's a couple things I need to fix, but not a bad place, good economic situation, and uh, got a little bit to uh, talk about with that later, but speaking about other voices, let's listen to the voices and get our blood going on this hump day with a little bit of uh, Steven Crowder and Chris Lash, otherwise known as Powdered Zombies, coming at you with a little bit of uh, their song, Mr. America, which, well, a little bit about the song, folks. It was... uh, Originally, I think it was done at CPAC. Uh, Chris, if you happen to be listening, get back to me. Let me know uh, when you actually, you and uh, Stephen actually did this song. But uh, the video is great. So if you go on YouTube and look up Powdered Zombies, and you'll find it on Stephen Crowder's channel there. Look up Powdered Zombies song, Mr. America. And uh, give it a listen. And uh, while you're listening, of course, you're hearing it on the show. But take a look at the video. And you'll see some uh, interesting faces there. Among them, of course, is uh, Chris Lash's lovely wife. The, uh, well, she's indescribable. The wonderful, for one word, uh, dynamic and uh, energetic and very outspoken uh, Dana Lash makes an appearance in the video. But, uh, Mr. America, here we go. look what you've done. Yeah, looking 
looking at the country is not what I intended. Gotta start to make a change before the never ending story of a failed nation runs straight out of luck. Like a million Tyler Perry movies, ah, you suck. All you little have life, you still selfish and warm. More voting in your self interest now instead of the core principles that made this country both honest and true. Free to speak, worship, pursue of your happiness too. With all the money you fly, you gon' be needing a big freeze. Hate the size of the Fed like Jesus hated the fig tree. As the spending goes up, you gotta borrow some more. Borrow in from the Chinese, like, oh my lord. Instead, you just tax more, you're increasing the size of the federal government. Yeah, the Georgia surprise. You'll be done like Detroit, man. No, you ain't coming back. Forget it, I'm out. I'm muzzle loading my Mr. America. I got you going yet? Yeah. I am Paul Gregor Matushak, and you are listening to the Mouth of Matushak Show for Wednesday, August 27th, 2014. And this is Hump Day, folks. So we want to uh, we want to take a lighthearted approach to some things when we can, and we want to talk about some happier things when we can. We want to talk about some good things when we can to kind of lift up uh, this middle of the week, this hump day, something to carry us on through to the end of the week on Friday where we start our weekend. And for many people, not all, but for many people, this is a three or four day work weekend because Monday is Labor Day. 
which means you're supposed to take the uh, day off from your job, possibly a paid day off, possibly not. And you're supposed to go and work for free fixing your home or fixing somebody else's home. No, I, I, I jest, folks. It's just a national holiday that was brought up to uh, make sure that uh, people got uh, a day off at least once a year. Um, and that's the uh, the primary reason why the, the day was created. But, uh, well, things have changed in our country, folks. These days, people work in decent jobs, earn uh, PTO, pay time off hours um, as they uh, continue to work for a company. And then when you change companies, of course, that whole clock starts all over again. And when you have uh, the current trend with uh, millennials where they're we're staying at a uh, company for more than two years, it's considered being there too long. It's kind of hard to accrue that PTO to anything substantial. But most companies, uh, at least ones that pay above minimum wage, do offer some kind of a, a pay time off benefit, which is a great thing. Now, minimum wage, okay, first of all, anybody who's trying to support a family on a minimum wage paycheck, um, that I hope that's a temporary condition. I hope you're working minimum wage while you're going to school or doing something else that can uh, get you a, a better paying, more fulfilling job. Because minimum wage, folks, it's not meant to raise a family on. So anybody wants to raise a minimum wage, you're going to hurt those who actually are working the jobs that are meant to support a family. Because now their wages are going to be um, proportionately decreased. And people are wondering, how does that work? Okay. Minimum wage is seven twenty-five an hour. A uh, 50% raise, that's 50% of 725 so about half, which is roughly uh, $3.60 an hour. Let's round it up to 375 So that would be boosting minimum wage uh, up to $11 an hour. So that's almost a 50% raise. So if you're going to do that, that would mean that somebody who's making... Uh, fourteen dollars an hour, which is just less than twice minimum wage, should now be making twenty-one dollars an hour. That would be a proportionate pay increase, wouldn't it? I mean, they're evidently doing something that the market decides is worth almost double minimum wage. So you're going to go from uh, paying more for those skilled workers. Well, that means you're going to be paying more for your car. You're paying more for that truck driver who uh, drives the big rigs and brings the food to the grocery store. You're going to be paying more for the x-ray technician who x-rays your joints when you get hurt. You're paying more for everything because if you're going to raise the minimum wage, you have to raise everything else proportionately. If you don't, well, then that $14 an hour position would basically be reduced in value by the market um, by, let me see, let's do that calculation, by about you know, 30%, 25%, 30%. So you might as well reduce their rate, instead of raising minimum wage, when you raise minimum wage, it's the same thing as reducing the wages of anybody above it by about half of whatever that increase is to minimum wage. That, that's not exact math. That's approximation. Yeah, you can go and look at full calculations by the experts, but that's the way it kind of goes down. But anyway, it, just increasing minimum wage is going to increase the price of everything. Um, that's an increase of 50% on the labor costs to produce your Whopper or produce your Big Mac 
for those of you that eat nothing but fast food or your or your Taco Bell or your Taco Cabana or whatever your your Popeye's chicken what whatever your fast food preference is so you have to pay more for the labor costs and you have to pay more because the labor costs involved in delivering the food etc cetera, etc cetera. it means the cost of the product goes up so suddenly your not sure what the costs are because I don't eat Burger King, but let's say a Whopper meal is five dollars, just for argument's sake. Well, now because the labor costs have gone up, that Whopper's meal is now going to cost seven fifty. Or pick a meal that currently costs about minimum wage for an hour's work. Well, when you increase the minimum wage, you also increase the cost of that value meal from equal to an hour's work of minimum wage at 725 to equal to whatever you increase the minimum wage to so the stuff that you're hoping you're gonna be able to afford better with the higher wages you can't because the price of everything inflates right along with the increase in minimum wage and it's basic math it's basic economics folks you don't believe me? Go take a a good class from a uh, a good professor, not somebody who's going to harp on Keynesian economics, not somebody who actually believes in socialism, but somebody who actually um, follows economics from a free market standpoint, looking at things the way that Adam Smith did. But there's my little economic lesson from the morning. Let's get on to something else. Uh, Dan Joseph. Um, who uh, does uh, a lot of videos for uh, for the Media Resource Center. And uh, you guys have seen him. He does the man on the street stuff. You listen to him. I know I've played a couple of clips. He goes to colleges and asks questions and uh, sees who actually knows what's going on or knows U.S. history and things. Um, and he's done some other stuff where he's gone in undercover and caught. Well, not really undercover, but he's gone in. And asked questions and caught people off guard answering uh, questions that where they reveal the uh, the truth about their agenda and then they get all ticked off because uh, they didn't realize that a conservative media person was there and uh, they ended up putting the truth about their spin out there. He's done some of that stuff too. Well, Dan Joseph um, has released a video with his take on the ice bucket challenge. Um, and I've played clips from the Ice Bucket Challenge with uh, Ted Cruz and uh, George Bush, President Bush, taking the challenge. And this thing has exploded, folks. It's now earned twice what it did when I, uh, when I reported on it last week. It's now has earned over $60 million, whereas last year when they did it, it only earned like one9 So... Uh, it's doing good things for a bad disease. So let's listen to what Dan Joseph um, had to say. Hey kids, Dan Joseph here. So the other day, somebody nominated me for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. If you don't know what the Ice Bucket Challenge is, then this must be your first time on the internet. So welcome. I hope you like cat videos and also horrible people anonymously saying awful things. You'll see a lot of that too. Now, if I had been challenged three weeks ago, I probably would have taken it. But at this point, I feel like the whole trend is getting dangerously close to Harlem Shake territory and I'm seeing a lot more people who find the constant barrage of videos annoying at this point instead of entertaining. So I declined. My other option was to make a donation to an ALS charity, but none of them would accept POGs as a form of payment. Which sucks for them, because I got a sweet ass POG collection. When I go to the club, I make it rain POGs. Yeah, they really don't like me at the club. The Ice Bucket Challenge has led to about 2.5 million videos and raised more than $63 million for ALS so far. This is amazing, especially considering that ALS only affects about 13,000 people in the United States. But ALS is a horrible, horrible disease, and despite all of the attention the disease has been getting recently, I'm not so sure that all of these people who are dumping buckets of ice water on themselves really understand what ALS is. I mean, actress Tara Reid took the challenge the other day. Do you really think Tara Reid knows what ALS is? Um, I look up sharks on the internet, and then I see like whale sharks. I'm like, oh, that must mean a whale and a shark have sex. And then I realize that whales were mammals. 
and sharks are animals. They have nothing to do with each other. I'm most concerned that the ice in that bucket may have hurt the hamster that runs around on the little wheel inside of her head. So, in lieu of taking the challenge or making